Critical mass happens when you are uh, fucking so many women that you are radiating like Elvis. The curtain open, boom, a big fucking spotlight hit him. He's all dressed in white. And he just radiated. It was just like Jesus Christ come to earth. It was the goddamn thing I've ever seen in my fucking life. It was flowing out of his fucking body. Well, that's the way you are when you're fucking everybody you want to fuck. You can't help it. I started dating Chris. She was just perfect. Everything I liked. And what that did was tell me that I could fuck 19-year-olds with a great fucking body. I was the baddest motherfucker on the planet. So I, I started radiating like that. And the other waitresses at Bob's Big Boy, where she had worked before she went back to college, pretty soon I was fucking another girl from Bob's Big Boy. And then she's telling the other girls, man, this guy's a great fuck, and he doesn't try to make you his girlfriend. So they were spreading the words about me, and I was fucking two or three of them at once. Then I went down to Marie Callender's where I was the blonde. And I must have been radiating in there because she started fucking me and a couple of the other waitresses started fucking me. So Penny was a girl uh, 18, 17 years old when I met her at a party the summer before. And she was now at, at Santa Cruz and she came home for the weekend and she was over at my friend John Dempsey's visiting her, John Dempsey's daughter. And she said, do you remember me? And I said, of course I remember. She looked like Elizabeth Taylor. Now that's hard to fucking forget, okay? And I am a sucker for a face like that. I said, of course, Penny, I remember you. Don't you remember I told you to take all the student loans you can get, you're gonna to have to pay them back someday? She said, oh yeah, that's how you met me. I said, yeah. She said, well, I'm in Santa Cruz now. Would you like to come up for the weekend sometime? I said, of course. <laughs> So I went to Santa Cruz and I'm fucking this beautiful babe and I come back and now I really feel like Superman. And anybody I wanted to fuck, I'd meet him at a party and two days later we'd call, we'd go out to lunch and we'd end up in bed almost immediately. I saw an evolutionary psychology about quails. Quails are little birds about that big if you've ever seen them. And I never saw them go to their lek, L-E-K which is their uh, meeting ground where they meet and do their mating. The boys are showing off and the girls are making up their mind. And then finally one girl gives it up and that guy starts to fuck her. All the girl quails want to fuck that guy. The aggressive male is fucking that other quail. So they all gather around and he just gets off her and starts fucking another one. And pretty soon they get they get all horny and they start fucking one of the other males standing by. And pretty soon two guys are fucking everybody and they're all standing in line for him. And pretty soon it's a it's a Chinese fire drill trying to fuck these two that are already fucking. And so when the evolutionary psychologist was writing this, he said, that explains why punk rockers can get laid. <laughs> because if one girl fucks them, they all want to fuck them. Other girls are fucking them, and that draws women like a fucking magnet. And evolutionary-wise, that means he passed all her tests. I don't have to fuck around and test him. So he's already got the stamp of approval from one of them. Somebody got in his pants, I can get in his pants. The competition starts then. And same thing happens to me. I'm not a rock star, but I'm radiating this. I'm a great fuck, and you want some. Meeting Chris in 40, when I was 44, 45, 46, between the middle of the 46th year and the, and the uh, when I was 48, that's when I met Sue Carroll. All the girls in between there, I can't, I can remember some of their first names, but that's about it. They were just in and out of my house all the time. Seven in one week once I wrote them all down. I couldn't keep them straight who I had a fucking date with. I had my calendar and I would mark their initials, but I would write their initials in numbers of the alphabet, hoping none of the girls were smart enough to figure out. I mean, it was just insane. I was just having the best time of my life and then I fucking got married. Now, how stupid is that? What the fuck's the matter with you, white boy? Jesus. No, no, that's what I got involved with Sue. And then I got involved with Kim and I fell in love with her. I met uh, Joanna when I was dating Kim. 
and that was such a fucking rocket ship, I just forgot about everybody else. I mean, those tits, are, I'm, I'm not even a fucking tit man, but those fucking tits were just, if you look at that picture where she's hanging on the, the lamppost in her bedroom, you can see this motherfucker is about that big around and it's shaped just like a perfect fucking Vargas tit. I bought her a t-shirt that said, if these were only brains, she would not wear it. <laughs> I it, thought it was funny. It, it, you're radiating no shame or, you know. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what you're radiating. That, that. I'm radiating no shame, that's for sure. I'm radiating you. You're next. I don't yeah, know. How fuck, I didn't think that. I wasn't thinking much of anything. I would just look at him and I would go, oh, that's nice. And I go talk to her and I must have been, well, I was doing all the stuff in the book, of course, because that worked. But I don't attribute all that, all those techniques to it. I attribute most of it to your fucking attitude. Because women sense that. They are not logical. They just sense it. You can't get there by buying pussy. It won't work. <laughs> It's not the same. Your, your self-esteem doesn't go up that way. I thought I was the biggest stud on the fucking planet and it must have radiated. Oh, in the middle of all that was, there was this fucking 18-year-old. What do you call those girls? People that lick envelopes. They, they're working for the candidate. That big around, her hips are about this big and her tits were about that big and standing up 18. And she had no idea how fucking awesome she was. None. Zero. She just knew boys like me. And this old man likes me, so I'm going to fuck him. So don't ask me how to, how, how to punch a button and have it happen. You have to be doing it. And consider I considered it completely fucking normal to be fucking everybody I get my hands on. I don't know how you attain that state. Because I think that holds a lot of guys back. They think it's wrong to fuck two girls at once. Or some guys even think it's wrong to talk to two girls at the same time. So I think part of it is like self-limiting, that you really don't think it's ethical to fuck that many women at once. I don't know. Had it wrong too. When I read um, Need a Lot of Pussy, I just made the assumption that of one pussy was enough, but you meant variety of pussy. And yes. I had that I had that mixed up. The reason is that evolutionarily you are designed to impregnate five thousand different women on your time on earth. That's your biological agenda installed by Mother Nature. And women are designed to have four different men father a child so that their DNA gets into the future. They don't want to bet all their fucking eggs on one guy. So they tr get four guys and have four different babies. And our agenda is to fuck them all and see how many live. <laughs> and leave. Fuck them and leave. And go fuck another one. And make as many babies as you can. Leave a string of fucking babies like basketball players do. 13 or 14 kids and nine different women. You know, like that. That's your biological agenda. No matter what these goddamn prudes think it is, that's your job. And when you're fulfilling your agenda, you're radiating, I am a man. I'm knocking up everybody I get my hands on.